So good morning guys, today we're going to be releasing the newest update for the connector. It has some new features, but it mainly has been focusing on ease of use, some more positive feedback for you guys, um, some more improvements for myself in the future. Let's first address the elephant in the room. This morning I received this message and I wanted to respond, yes of course, the library of connector is open source, it's up on GitHub. And I believe that was true, but I've never ticked the, this is not a private repository box. Um, so I've just done that and now it's publicly out here as open source, so my apologies. Perhaps you may have noticed that, I keep looking at that, wait, this used to be over there, um, that I have a new webcam. So I hope my face is going to be a little bit clearer and it gives me the possibility to do something like this, you know, use the old one for the throttle. Um, it gives me a bit of freedom and the color on this one, the bottom one, is just way more brighter than what we have up here, as we're able to tell. Besides the connector, we have some other updates. I've been working on the um, panel for the Cessna 172. It'll have the avionics master, master switches in here, it will have the cabin lights, the power toggles, etc. I even put the um, screw holes in according to how it looks in game except at the top, so a bit of creative freedom I took there, but... Uh, and the first test print came out actually pretty well. Um, the text is a bit harder to read on camera, um, but it has all the text like it has in-game. This is going to be a bit of a bigger project than I expected, because I want it to look good. Basic and simple like that. But let's go back to the connector shell. Well, usually I always start the game up before I record, start recording my videos. Today I'm gonna to skip that. There is a reason for it, of course. First of all, let's start with the tab that opens first. Outputs, the comms, I've now added the NAV OBS1 and NAV OBS2. Um, per request of uh, Pontiac51 on my Discord. If you go to Discord, check the link out in the description down below. We can hit start. And we'll see that last received is a new message just below, down below here. I have the status messages. Now, usually if I hit start at this point, the, the application would already crash. So that wouldn't work. So in my case, I'm going to open up the game. Oh, <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, we have the last received messages. It will usually just show you one thing at a time. So if I now change this, unless I rapidly, rapidly input data at a pace that it can't really cope with. Um, but eventually it will just automatically connect to the game if you just run the application. Um, you don't have to wait anymore that the game's loaded up. Step back out, you can just hit start, wait for the game to launch, and it will be connected the moment it's able to. So, that may sound simple, um, and it probably is, but it took a bit of a... Bit of... The biggest issue with this was that, at the beginning of when I started this project, I had no knowledge of C++, in which this is written. The downside of that was that, because I have had no clue how it works, I sometimes took an approach that worked, but in the end wasn't the most optimal. So I refactored most of my code base in the past week to be more readable, logical, um, minimal even, because I had the worst part was where I repeated the same block of code 500 times, 500 different commands, which could be reduced to one statement uh, function. So I went back and read it all those 500 to so just trigger a function call instead of type the code block, etc. Um, so it was a bit of a drama how it was set up. And that was my own fault, so now I fixed it. It should also be more readable for you guys now it's open source, um, except for the connect worker, that's something for you. So the game has started. Oh, I just stopped the connector because I needed to upload a new sketch. I were able to tell that it tells me connection is closed so right now if i hit start again it says connected to the game if i hit stop it will say connection closed last time it would stick to the old message um, so this works 
a lot better. Here we go, last received. Gonna load up a plane, go to Amsterdam. I'm gonna take off. Got my rudder pedals hooked up. At least I, I have my Logitech racing wheel with the gas brake pedals and I've run it through UCR, which is a controller remapper to create a new axis, which takes the average of the brake and the gas pedal to create some kind of rudder feel. It works better than a controller, so I'm all satisfied. The weather station called for code yellow because we had some gusting winds today. Um, at least where I live, and I live in like a 20 minute drive from Skip Hall, so it should be pretty accurate. I can't even look how hot it is. Okay, I didn't expect it to be um, this bad. Whoa. I'm being tossed around. I'm gonna try to take off anyway. Um, screw it. <laughs> I feel like a little koi toy car or something. Look at this. I'm going sideways. Okay, this was a terrible idea. I'm quite curious what the wind actually is. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps this wasn't the best six. weather to take off in as a system. Yeah, but I can still demonstrate what I originally wanted to demonstrate. Yeah, this is a lost course. <laughs> ah, go against the wind. Actually, gaining some speeds, I think. There we go. Semi stable, and that's what matters. Let's look at what we've done this update. So, I've worked on some several other set functions. Um, I thought they were working, working, and they did. And I somehow broke them, so they're gonna be up in the next release, which is gonna be next week. Um, but we're able to tell that right now I've added a new function that controls the trim wheel. It's a little bit jumpy and it's gonna be smoothened out over time. Uh, just like a throttle, it needs some fine tuning to see what the sweet spot is in regards to um, filtering. I, it, it's pretty stable, it will never go back to full decline, full open. There we go. And it's even actually pretty smooth. You see that sometimes it has a little bump going up and down, but it's fine with me actually. And this will enable you to create your own trimming wheels. Um, let me show you. How the code looks. The code is pretty. The code is pretty simple. It's a connector dot send set elevator trim. If you want to do it with a potentiometer, you need to enter the word pot after it. So send set elevator trim pot will be in the release notes as well. You pass the pin at which your potentiometer is connected. So in my case, a zero on my Uno. You can use any Arduino you'd like. The minimum value of the Potentiometer. So in my case, it can fully open and can fully close. It will probably be zero till one o two three. Um, I've put these values in because there is a chance that you've created something where the trim wheel isn't able to go to full incl uh, incline or decline. I'm not quite sure if those are the correct terms, but you get the drift. If that is the case, you could change this value to whatever your lowest values of the potentiometer. Let's say it's 150, you change this to 150. But in most cases, it will be 0 and 1023. So with that, you can just easily 
manage the trim wheel. Um, it's pretty uh, gradual as well. I've used the buttons before on my um, flight stick. And while it works, uh, it was pretty choppy. Then you overshot it and you, you know, this, see it, it's, it's really, you can read, it's really delicate. movements that you couldn't with a button. There we go. Now there is an off chance that you don't want to do it with a potentiometer, you want to use a button perhaps, but you still want to have that fine uh, tuned control. Uh, wrong sketch. This one. What we then could do is just a simple connector dot send set elevator trim and pass it a value of between zero uh, minus 168 okay so <laughs> i had to look it up because uh yeah it wasn't the top of my head but it needs a value of minus 16383 up to 16383 so zero is going to be the center position of the wheel like um resume like where the line is or the arrow, right? This is going to be the zero position. And the top position is going to be 16383. And the bottom position is going to be minus 16383. So with that function, you're able to create your own calculations. This will just send that value to the connector. You could even just do a serial print line yourself. Um, 900 and a space. And then your value as a string or whatever printed to serial that should work as well but i think this is easier to just do send set elevator trim and i don't know uh, put a value in like 1800 you could create a rotary encoder that just ticks it up by one and then sends it or by 10 or by 20 or by 100 whatever you desire you're able to create it with this function and like i mentioned the smoothening at this part where you use the potentiometer is something that's actively being worked on. It may take a bit to get a feel of it because the problem with filtering is that there is a chance that you're gonna filter out certain desired actions, right? Because if you um, imagine that you want to trim quite rapidly or you over trim it by mistake, you have a chance that you filter out the entire movement and then the position is gonna jump, right? Um, because you don't want it to go from 0 to 100 or from 100 to 10 um, at the wink of an eye, which sometimes would happen if you don't do any filtering. So if you put in a filter, you have to find that really sweet spot to see where it's usable, it's enjoyable, and it, it doesn't uh, bother you when it sometimes makes a little jump um, and then it cracks itself afterwards. Like I mentioned, next week, uh, the, next, the next set of set functions will be in as well. There's been a little bit of trouble. I had a terrible week programming-wise. Perhaps you've heard of enums. If not, they're a kind of construction and coding. That can be a pain in the butt in C++ to display the names of them. And I found some libraries and I started adding them and testing and nothing worked. So I then started deleting the files that didn't work. <laughs> With that action, I deleted a big part of um, the code base that I changed, worked on, but apparently never saved to GitHub. So that got lost in the process, got that part back, um, but it just set me back a few days. I wanted to give you this update already because then you could start using the trim. You'll get a more responsive status message saying connected, you disconnect, your connection is closed. Um, which would make sense because you hit stop, but it's also fine that you see that there is no uh, connection at the moment. As long as there is no connection made, no mission message will be shown here. So the moment you start the game, hit start, it won't say anything until it's properly connected. Here it will display the last receive commands. So let's say if I now, if I move the throttle, you see that 199 came in. 198 if I hit the propeller, handle, 115 for the mixture and 900 for the trim. 
So now you're able to visually tell that a button works, because if I turn it, it will tell me so. It will only work if the game is loaded up at the moment. Um, in the future I want it to work even if the game isn't running, so you can debug without the game on to see if it works. Right now you need to have the game running. This update can be downloaded from the website in the link down below. As always, a special thank you to my patrons who support me and special thanks to SimRacing for you and Andre for being the top tier backers. Next week, the new set functions will be out. To my patrons, it will be out uh, the moment they're done so they can start fooling around with it. The visual part for you guys that I've been working on has been quite minimal this update. Um, but the back end has gotten a pretty hefty overhaul, if I may say so myself. So expect more features in the next one. Now this is on a bit more of a stable foundation. If you want to have the early access, check out my Patreon page in the description down below. Can't wait to get started on the can't wait to get started on the Cessna toggle panel. Um, once I've done with this, I will upload the video as well. So keep an eye out, and I hope to see you in the next one.